Breaking on 4 News Now at 6, new details on the alibi for the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students, where he says he was the night of the murders. New at 6, a frost advisory has just been issued for parts of the region. It's going to be a cold night in your first alert forecast. And hundreds of Providence healthcare workers are preparing to go on strike. We'll explain why each side decided to walk away from the negotiating table. You're watching 4 News Now at 6. We begin with breaking news out of Lataw County. New details on the alibi for the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Kirsten O'Connor. And I'm Derek Dias. Up until now, Brian Koberger's lawyers have said Koberger often drove around late at night. The state criticized this alibi as vague and asked for more detail. According to Koberger's lawyers, he enjoys hiking and running on the Palouse. On the night of the murders, they say Koberger drove south of Pullman and west of Bosco, including going to Wawai Park. The defense says it intends to introduce a cell tower expert to show Koberger never traveled east on the Moscow Pullman Highway that morning and could not be the vehicle captured on video near a cannabis shop. No date has been set yet for this murder trial. Also breaking tonight, we're learning new information surrounding the circumstances of a missing teenage boy out of Spokane Valley who has developmental challenges. The sheriff's office says 15-year-old Jacob White never came home from school today. His family says he's recently made threats to run away, but he operates at a lower level than other teens his age. He was last seen in the area of 32nd and Pines in Spokane Valley. Jacob is 5'3", weighs about 130 pounds, and has brown hair and brown eyes. He was wearing a black black hoodie, a Lakers jersey, and a black hat with a diamond. If you know where Jacob is, you're asked to call Crime Check, 509-456-2233. Unfair and illegal negotiation practices. That's what Sacred Heart healthcare workers on the brink of a strike are claiming against Providence. Months of failed negotiations over a new contract have escalated to this point. Nearly 500 healthcare workers are slated to go on strike in just five days from now. Jordan Smith is live at Sacred Heart with where negotiations are now and why this strike appears imminent. Jordan. Well, we're at the point that neither side wanted to be at and the escalation of going to a strike. Workers say they don't feel respected and that they're not compensated for the work that they're doing. And when they voted in favor of that strike, that's when Providence walked away from the bargaining table. I want to be very clear about this strike. We do not take this lightly. Months of failed negotiations have led to this point. 499 Sacred Heart workers just days away from a strike. Since November, workers have been trying to negotiate better benefits and pay, but they say Providence has responded with lackluster offers, including reduced health and dental benefits. I would rather be helping them than be walking the line, but sometimes you have to do that. You have to, to I guess, wake them up. Union members say once they notified management of a strike, Providence walked away from the negotiating table something Providence CEO Susan Stacy confirmed. But at that moment, my priorities shifted to making sure we stayed open and able to provide safe quality care to our community. Stacy is now focused on filling the near 500 vacancies with temporary workers, paying them close to triple what the original workers earn. Strikes are expensive. It is short notice. We are committed to having quality people with the credentials that are required, and that costs money. A slap in the face to the workers fighting for change. So when we hear Providence can't do what they need to do to help keep, retain, and recruit, us already there doing the work, and they got, they got that kind of money just to throw at these things. Of, uh, what are they making a point? What are they trying to do? All this done is absolutely outrageous. Like Workers say Providence is engaged in illegal negotiation tactics, like trying to engage directly with caregivers outside negotiating channels, trying to bypass union representatives. Would you say that those claims would be false that they're making? I would say that I know our practices have been legal. Providence says they walked away from negotiations to focus on getting emergency staff and to make sure that the hospital stays operational to the public, something they assure me they can do. But I asked hypothetically, let's say they filled all 499 positions by Monday when the strike begins. Would they then consider coming back to the negotiating table? 
and they told me once again they're just excited for this strike to be over so negotiations can resume. Live in Spokane tonight, Jordan Smith, 4 News Now. Well, a man is now in jail for running away from Cheney police officers and ditching a loaded gun at a nearby school. Take a look at this video. You can see a person investigators identify as five-time convicted felon Jacob Petito trying to throw the gun into a trash can at Betts Elementary, but he missed. Police say this happened on April 4th after Petito refused to pull over for police. At some point, he got out of the car and tried to run away. Police eventually caught up with him and arrested him. The gun was found by a teacher the next day. Police say no students ever came into contact with it since they were on spring break at the time. Petito now faces multiple charges. This morning in Post Falls, a Kootenai County Sheriff's deputy crashed into a power pole with a canine officer inside. The department says first there was a collision with another vehicle at the intersection of Boating Avenue and McGuire Road that sent the deputy's car into the pole. The deputy has minor injuries. The canine is okay. And the sheriff's office did not say if the other car's driver is hurt. Idaho State Patrol is investigating. Well, a woman is accused of using a man's truck to run him down and kill him. And she made her first appearance this afternoon in district court. That man was facing child porn possession charges. Alyssa Bray pleaded not guilty. Her bail was kept at $1 million. Spokane police say she was walking in southwest Spokane April 9th when she accepted a ride from 70-year-old Gerald Fox. Detectives say she took control of Fox's truck and ran him over, leaving him to die on the side of the road. Bray was later caught in Lincoln County, where deputies say she was under the influence. Fox was accused of having child pornography in 2022. Definitely feels spring-like during the day, but in the morning, it is really cold. Yeah, with some areas even dropping down into the teens. We're going to send it over to Chris Crocker now to see how long these cold nights are going to last. Well, we have another one on the way tonight. In fact, the National Weather Service has just issued frost advisories for the Moses Lake area up through Wenatchee and into Chelan. Also, the Lewiston area, Nez Perce, parts of Garfield and Asotan counties. It is a freeze warning in effect further to the south, Wallowa County, the Tri-Cities, uh, and a lot of this depends on how far along we are in the growing season. We are gonna be just as cold, if not colder, further to the north and east, but because things are already sort of underway in those regions, that is why they are sounding the alarm. It is a cool day right now. We are only in the 40s in Bonners Ferry, Sandpoint, Coeur d'Alene, and St. Mary's. It's only 49 right now in Pullman, 51 in Spokane, and 54 degrees in Ritzville. But we're headed down to overnight lows below freezing in many locations. And any time you're below 36, we start to worry about some of those more tender plants. We have a few isolated sprinkles around the region. They will not hold together long, and a lot of what we're picking up on our radar is not even reaching the ground. will be clear and dry overnight. And and uh, have, a, again, a cold night ahead. Here's a look at your evening forecast. We're going to stay in the 40s through 9 o'clock. By 11, we'll be down in the 30s on our way to an overnight low below freezing. I'll be back with your seven-day forecast. There are some warmer nights ahead that might come with some wet weather, too. That's in just a few minutes, Derek. Well, several Alaska Airlines flights were delayed this morning as the company grounded all of their planes nationwide. The airline says it had a problem while upgrading its system that calculates weight and balance. The situation was resolved about an hour later and the ground stop was lifted. The airline warned passengers to expect some flight delays throughout the rest of the day and then apologize for the inconvenience. This is just the latest safety issue causing headaches for travelers. Today, a Boeing whistleblower testified on Capitol Hill about safety concerns. The man claiming parts of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner were not put together properly, a claim the company has repeatedly denied. Marissa Rio is in studio tonight breaking down his testimony. Kirsten Derrick, for 90 minutes, whistleblower Sam Salapur, who still works at Boeing, was joined by former employees who say the Dreamliner is not safe, claiming they could fall apart over time. I want to make clear that I have raised these issues over three years. I was ignored. I was told not to create, not to create delays. I was told, frankly, to shut up. 
He says when assembling the fuselage on 787 aircrafts, gaps between pieces were left too wide, creating stress which could lead to fatigue and failure. As of now, Solipore hasn't provided any documents to support this claim. Boeing strongly disputes the allegations. This week, Boeing invited cameras inside its South Carolina facility, where senior engineers explained how the fuselage are tested, simulating 165,000 flights with no issues. It's actually the longest fatigue test of any commercial airplane that's ever been run. Boeing has faced more than five years of questions over its commercial jets following two deadly crashes of a different model. The 737 MAX, January's door plug blowout aboard an Alaska Airlines flight added to the pressure. In an earlier hearing, a panel of experts gave Congress a series of recommendations by the FAA on how to fix the issues at Boeing. There needs to be an environment of psychological safety. They need to learn from that and communicate it and pass it on. In studio tonight, I'm Marissa Rio for News Now. The Caitlin Clark effect. Attention on women's basketball is more popular than we've ever seen it before, drawing more viewers in the NCAA championship game than the men's championship game. So why are we seeing fewer girls playing at a time when female athletes are shining? You want to play in the tournaments, that's the whole part of it, to play in the games. And then when there's no tournaments available or teams to even compete against, it makes it really hard. What's driving these girls away from the sport? And could the rising popularity in women's basketball get the younger generation back on the court? Watch our story tomorrow on 4 News Now at 6. Well, here's the live look over a dry downtown Spokane. Coming up, though, meteorologist Matt Gray explains how much rain we could see this month. Whitworth University is going through budget cuts right now. How this change is impacting students on campus. That's coming up. Connect with 4 News Now on KXLY+. Plus. Shop us and you will see no one saves you more green than the green team at Jennifer's Auto Sales and Service. Some injury lawyers you see on TV aren't even from here. They could be in Texas, California. Or even worse, Florida. Local representation matters. Good luck getting attention from a thousand miles away. Call the advocates. We're here for you, not way over there for you. Considering a new air conditioner? Before you commit, call Bill's Heating and AC. We're elevating efficiency and savings by matching heat pump prices to any local air conditioner quotes and setting a new standard for comfort. Why heat pumps? Similar to ACs, they offer high efficiencies to heat and cool your home for a lower cost. And with the purchase of qualifying equipment, you may be eligible to receive a 25C tax credit of up to $3,200. Don't miss out. Call Bill's Heating and AC for your free quote now. When I was told I had a brain tumor, my life disappeared in a moment. I feared for my future, but even more, I feared for the ones I love. How would they move on without me? But when my doctor told me about the Gamma Knife of Spokane, everything changed. I can get my brain tumor treated in just one day and continue living the life I love. Because of Gamma Knife, I have hope. Join STCU Best of Broadway for classic comedies, family favorites, and blockbuster hits live at First Interstate Center for the Arts. Season tickets include Stephen Sondheim's smash hit musical comedy, Company, Funny Girl, the hit Broadway show with one of the greatest musical scores of all time, hilarious fan favorite, Beetlejuice, feel-good celebration, Mamma Mia, and the multi-Tony award-winning new musical, MJ. Order season tickets to reserve your seats now at broadwayspokane.com. You know what I've learned from playing soccer? Play as a team, outwit your opponent, and never give up. You know what I've learned from being a lawyer? Play as a team, outwit your opponent, never give up. No wonder we work so well together. Yeah. Next ET. I feel incredibly lucky. Where was Zendaya taking her fashion tour to Hollywood then? Hi, I'm Devin Sawa, and this is my ET retrospective. Next ET. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Entertainment Tonight at 7.30. She's the star of Growing Up Chrisley. And tomorrow morning, in an emotional new interview, Savannah Chrisley opens up about her parents, their prison sentences, and taking custody of her younger siblings while her parents are incarcerated. That's the tough part. Good Morning America, tomorrow. 
students at Whitworth University say they're surprised by the school's budget cuts tonight. The university says it has a budget of $68 million, but is currently nearly $3 million in the red. It's now evaluating academic courses and employment, letting some professors go. Peter Troy explains why some students say its decision is not the right call for their education and careers. Whitworth students are feeling the impact of recent budget cuts right now. Students who are majoring in music tell me some of their professors won't be teaching anymore next year, and their biggest concern right now, their education. Pressing keys and hitting the right note. The saxophone is what Whitworth student Melissa Jones describes as a huge part of her life since she was 11 years old. Best thing about saxophone, there's so many things. Last week, she heard about her music professor's unexpected departure. Shock, um, disbelief, a little bit of um, denial. Whitworth University says budget cuts are now happening because of a low enrollment between 2020 and 2024. It says it's evaluating program offerings, operations, and employment budget lines right now. People come to study with specific people, and if you take away those people and replace them with kind of uncertain, uncertain professors, you really take away people's main reasons to come to this school. Some students say it could impact their careers. With them gone, it is, it's very hard for me to feel certain about my future. Jones says students have collected letters and will deliver those to the university administration. The university says it has communicated to the campus through meetings and town halls. I urge the university to reconsider this decision for the longevity of the music department, the education quality of the students. Reporting from Wheatworth University, Peter Choi, for News Now. Thank you, Peter. Here is a look at your Thursday forecast. It is going to be a crisp start to the day. We will be below freezing throughout the region, heading to a high of 56 degrees. 57 is our average high. I'll be back with your seven day forecast after the break. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Washington Trust Bank Shred Day. Catch all the action at Caesar Sportsbook, located inside Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino, the area's largest sportsbook. Bet your favorite games live as they happen with in-play betting or place bets ahead of time with the Bet Ahead feature. Only at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. You just win here. For over 30 years, we've been keeping you warm. Or cool, but now we are taking you to the next level of innovation. Fireplaces, sleek modern design, or traditional electric, efficient and trendy. Lighting, permanent, decorative, year-long lighting, providing security as well as beauty. These are just some of the ideas we are bringing to you for the next level at Holiday Heating, Cooling and Electric. We call it Holiday Innovation. Call us today. Fresh Soul brings Southern inspired recipes to life. The nonprofit restaurant educates students through a diverse job training program. In just 12 weeks, we teach the kids everything they need to know about food prep, how to cook, and uh, proper etiquette skills. This experience empowers youth to be successful upon completion of this program. Fresh Soul, get these kids experience for the real world. New America Credit Union is honored to donate $1,000 to Fresh Soul. This is how New America cares for kids. Time to grab the broom and sweep out the old. It's spring cleaning time at Wendell Ford. Help us say goodbye to all the remaining 2023 Fords and hello to this year's best deals. The 23 F-150, 1.9% financing for 72 months. The 23 Mach-E, 0% financing for 72 months. The 23 Ford Escape, plug-in hybrid, 0% financing for 66 months. Hurry in today for these spring cleaning deals before they're swept away. Wendell Ford at the Y on North Division. Welcome to Moo Fitness. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Sign up now with no enrollment fee. Let's go. Catch all the action at Caesar Sportsbook, located inside Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino, the area's largest sportsbook. Bet your favorite games live as they happen with in-play betting or place bets ahead of time with the Bet Ahead feature. Only at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. You just win here. 
Ooh, another moody spring sky as we take a look at a live picture from the Spokane over the Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena, the Spokane County Courthouse. We're starting to see those clouds clear and it is going to be a cold night. It was cold this morning. We got got down to 29 degrees in Spokane. 37 is our average overnight low. We'll be back in that ballpark soon enough, but we have some cold nights ahead. And as I mentioned earlier, a frost advisory in effect for parts of the region. Meanwhile, oh dear, Matt, my clicker did the pause thing. You want to help me out there? Um, sometimes it sticks <laughs> and there's nothing I can do. Uh, thankfully, Matt is here. Four things to know about your forecast. It is going to be a cold Thursday morning. Isolated showers in the uh, afternoon, a warmer weekend, and uh, the possibility of some showers on Saturday night. Uh, let's take a look at our morning lows across the region. We're going to be down in the 20s and lower 30s again tomorrow. Over the next few days, our temperature trend, um, Matt, we hit the button. <laughs> Maybe I should <sighs> the drop back. Uh, I tell you what, you go You're reset. You go reset the clicker, and I'll run this. Um, we just have to unplug it, uh, do a little power cycle. It's a lot of engineering. We are going to be up above freezing by Saturday night because we have a system passing through. Forecast radar starting off late tonight. Skies will be clearing. We will be dry overnight. As we get into tomorrow afternoon, we'll start to see some cumulus build up again and some isolated sprinkles uh, becoming less and less widespread. High temperatures tomorrow, meanwhile, will be in the mid 50s, which is just about average. We'll be a little bit cooler through North Idaho with some clouds. Here's a look at your planning forecast. We will be uh, looking at temperatures right about average through Friday. Then we warm up Saturday, then that system comes in late Saturday into Sunday. We have the possibility of some showers Saturday night and into Sunday. It's going to be a breezy day. Earth Day looks gorgeous. Blue sky sunshine and a high of 63. We could be back into some shower activity on Wednesday. Derek and Kirsten. All right, Chris, thank you. Well, we love getting lots of beautiful weather this time of year, but we also need those April showers. Yeah, after a winter with low snowpack, spring rain looks even more important for 2024. Meteorologist Matt Gray is tracking those wet weather trends tonight for us. And I'm doing tech support as well. <laughs> That's how it goes on live television. <laughs> so even after a little bit of wet weather yesterday, we keep falling further and further behind when it comes to moisture this spring. Since the start of meteorological spring on March 1st. Spokane has seen 1.46 inches of moisture, but we're now over halfway through April, and that wouldn't even be average for the month of March by itself, not including the first half of this month. There is also no real big weather events that are standing out over the next week or two, especially when it comes to moisture content. So getting decent rain, not exactly a guarantee for us before the month is over. Now with low snowpack and a mediocre rain outlook in the coming weeks. The Washington Department of Ecology cleared a statewide drought earlier this week. And I tell you what, this is all becoming quite a familiar story in recent years. Now, spring rain has actually been trending down since the year 2000. And I got to say, that's kind of surprising. And that's because if we look at a longer time scale, spring is the only season in the now 144 year climate record for Spokane that's actually been getting wetter just by a little bit over time. Now, as the years go on, more and more of our yearly moisture is becoming very dependent on what happens during this particular quarter of the year. What's causing it? How long the trend is going to last? Well, we don't know the answers to those questions, but right now, if we don't get a wet end to this spring, it is going to be six years since we saw the last above normal rainfall in Spokane during this season. Wow. All right. Thank you, Matt. The Coeur d'Alene Police Department will soon have a new home. Coming up, why the department says a new building is needed. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Elegance, style, quality, custom made for your project. Agalite shower doors and bath enclosures by River City Glass are designed for a lifetime of use. Timeless beauty that speaks for itself with superior quality and exceptional value.
offering exquisite custom wine room enclosures and office room glass, specializing in custom mirrors crafted to fit your space, producing high performance glass for every project, residential and commercial. River City Glass. Get the tax break you deserve this week at Walker's Furniture as they offer a double sales tax discount or no money down special financing for up to five years with no minimum purchase. There's no better time to freshen up your living room, dine in style, or get that bedroom set you've always wanted. Plus, get a double sales tax discount or up to five years special financing with no money down. Making it the perfect time to match your tax return and spend less at Walker's. My name is Leslie Gonzalez, and I had colon rectal cancer. I went to my family practice doctor, and she misdiagnosed me. And that's when I contacted Summit Cancer Center, and it was different than night and day. The care, the compassion, the kindness. I believe if I wouldn't have come over to Summit that I probably wouldn't be here today. Being a Reardon bus driver is incredibly rewarding. It's hard work with a lot of responsibility. But it's also amazing to be the first and last Reardon staff member that many students see every day. If you're seeking a supportive team, competitive wages, and the opportunity to make a lasting impact, look no further than Reardon, where every student is known, loved, and learning. Now you can get money back on state taxes you already paid with the Washington State Working Families Tax Credit. Visit workingfamiliescredit.wa.gov. For 10 years, the Fort News Now Extreme Team has been rebuilding and rejuvenating baseball fields. Is yours next? It's that time again. Go to KXOI.com and tell us why your field needs a makeover. Diamonds and Dreams brought to you by your hometown Chevy dealers and Horizon Credit Union. Par, family owned since 1930. Go where the builders go. What are you going to build? Around the nation, a dozen of the country's biggest news organizations are urging President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump to participate in televised debates ahead of the 2024 election. The open letter was signed by a group of major broadcast, cable, and print outlets. CNN's Julia Benbrook has the story. In the letter, the news organizations noted that general election debates have played a vital role in presidential elections of the past 50 years and urged the candidates to publicly commit to participating in general election debates before the November election. This comes as Trump's team is pushing for more debates and for the debates to start earlier, a big switch from their stance during the primary season. When former President Donald Trump's primary opponents called on him to debate. Donald Trump should be on this stage. Don't you think it's high time he get on a debate stage? He refused, skipping all five Republican debates. But now Trump is urging President Joe Biden to join him on the debate stage soon. We have an empty podium right here to my right. You know what that is? That's for Joe Biden. I'm trying to get him to debate. In a letter, the Trump campaign wrote, while the Commission on Presidential Debates has already announced three presidential debates and a vice presidential debate to occur later this year, we are in favor of these debates beginning much earlier. I think he wants to look like the tough guy who wants to debate, but he has, he has a lot of flexibility to get out of it. Biden has not publicly committed to debating Trump, but he hasn't ruled it out either, telling reporters this last month. Mr. President, will you commit to a debate with former President Trump? It depends on his behavior. The first presidential debate is slated to take place in San Marcos, Texas on September 16th. That's 50 days before Election Day. The current schedule has the debate slated to take place earlier than in recent past. In 2020, the first debate between Trump and Biden took place just 35 days before Election Day. And in 2016, Trump and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton met on the debate stage 43 days before the election. Reporting at the White House, I'm Julia Benbrook. Well, we have much more coming up tonight at 6.30. Including why Lime scooters are now available in Spokane Valley and Airway Heights, but not in the city of Spokane. And this pile of dirt will soon be the new home to the Coeur d'Alene Police Department, how a new building will help the department better protect families during large events. 
Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. If there's one thing we like, it's choices. Find yours with Ford F-150. Gas, hybrid, or all electric. Get 1.9 for 72 on an F-150 and up to 15,000 on an F-150 Lightning only at your local Ford dealer. Have you worked or enjoyed the outdoors in Lincoln County before 2014? You may have been exposed to harmful Libby amphibole asbestos. Get your free asbestos health screening today. Don't wait. Early detection is key. Contact the CARD clinic at LibbyAsbestos.org. Buenos dias. I'm Eddie Garcia and we're building this house. Hey, I'm Tanya Galvez. I work at Par Lumber. And we supply Eddie with all the materials he needs. Par, your total home building source since 1930. Go where the builders go. What, what are, are you going to build? It's the place we start every day. Where we prep, primp, and relax on the weekends. At Northwest Granite, we understand your bathroom is the second most used room in your home. Which is why we help you pick out the perfect cabinets, tile backsplash, and countertops to make your bathroom beautiful. At Northwest Granite, we help you design it, we build them, and we will install it so you can enjoy it. It's a vintage sale like no other. Custer's 49th Annual Spring Antique and Collector Sale this Saturday and Sunday at the Spokane Fair and Expo Center. Dealers from across the Northwest will be selling everything from rare to retro. With thousands of unique items and so much variety, the fun is in the find. Single day admission, $8. Tickets on sale now at CusterShows.com. Custer Spring Antique and Collector Sale this Saturday and Sunday at the Spokane Fair and Expo Center. Presented by Jim Custer Enterprises. If there's one thing we like, it's choices. And your Ford dealership is the place to start. Get zero for 72 and 2,000 cash on an Escape or 3,000 on a Mustang Mach-E only at your local Ford dealer. Donald Trump on trial and the Melania lookalike. Next Inside Edition. What we've learned about the Trump aide who's always by his side. And is Trump really nodding off in court? Then the pet octopus. This family thought it would be a breeze having an octopus for a pet until she laid 50 eggs. Now that's an octomom. Watch the next Inside Edition. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Inside Edition at 7. Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6.30. Well, the Coeur d'Alene Police Department's current station has been around for 25 years. In that time, it's grown from 75 employees to more than 120, also growing Coeur d'Alene's population. Bronte Sarotsky explains how the police department's expansion will help them keep up with more crime. With how big the police department is getting, they're saying that this expansion is crucial for them to continue fighting crime and keeping you safe. And we've just run out of space. Coeur d'Alene is booming and the police department is getting squeezed. When the police station was first built in 1999, only about 34,000 people lived in Coeur d'Alene. Now, almost 58,000 live in the Lake City. That there's different ways to staff police departments. A lot of people look at the number of officers per thousand. We look at the ability for for the police department to respond for calls for service. And we don't want to be tied just to the what we call chasing the radio. Because officers now have to deal with a lot more than they did in the past. Be proactive to stop that suspicious car, to see a hand-to-hand -hand drug deal and stop that activity. By expanding into the space next door to its headquarters, officers will be able to do more. One of the biggest parts in this expansion is the Emergency Operations Center, which would be a one-stop shop for all first responders to work together in an emergency. So when we have our wind events and we have the large events that we have down here, 4th of July and those types of things, we work with our fire department, our streets department. We can all be in one area to command those things. All under one roof, working under uniformed command. We just get the people to where they need to be as fast as they can to benefit the citizens of our community. Next week, fencing will go up in the first phase of construction should wrap up next March. Reporting in Coeur d'Alene, Bronte Sarotsky, 4 News Now. A woman who was acquitted for killing her five-year-old nephew back in 2015 is now facing murder charges for killing a man in Meade over the weekend. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office says 37-year-old Cynthia Khalil killed her ex-boyfriend Justin Daniel. At the time, she was under a no-contact rest restraining order, and deputies say Khalil confronted Daniel over a young child that they shared. They said she stabbed and shot him several times before running from the crime scene. A teen at the home at the time was not hurt. 
All right, here's a live look over a cloudy downtown Spokane, and we are in for another cold night. Let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Chris Crocker to see how cold it's going to get. Well, those skies are going to clear and temperatures drop. We have a frost advisory until 9 a.m. Thursday for the areas shaded in light blue on your screen. That includes uh, parts of Nez Perce County, the Lewiston area, parts of Asoden and Garfield counties, as well as the Moses Lake area up through Wenatchee and and Chelan. We also have freeze warnings in effect for the area in dark purple uh, impacting the Tri-City areas, Walla Walla, Yakima. Temperatures right now around the region, it's 51 in Spokane. We're in the 40s though for Pullman, St. Mary's, up through Coeur d'Alene and Bonners Ferry. Look out past 31 degrees. It's 51 degrees presently in Ritzville, but we're heading to overnight lows down below freezing in many locations and some spots where we have those advisories and warnings. The growing season is either just getting started or well underway. Uh, and that is why the National Weather Service has taken that additional step of issuing those alerts. On our satellite and radar right now, we do have a few isolated sprinkles in progress. It is not amounting to much until we get down around the Rockford area. We're starting uh, to see some precipitation actually reaching the ground, uh, which a lot of what we've been picking up on radar has not been doing because we have fairly dry air at the surface. Your Thursday planner, 31 degrees to start the day. Plenty of sunshine with a high temperature of 56, which is just about average. 31 is not average. I'm going to be back with some Wildlife Wednesday photos and your seven-day forecast. Kirsten. Thank you, Chris. Well, people living in Spokane's Perry District could feel some ground rumbling over the next couple of days. Crews are blasting rocks to make way for new apartments. We first told you about the 54-unit Liberty Park Terrace project at Perry and Hartson two years ago. Ago, Proclaim Liberty, a low-income housing organization, has been working to, sec to secure funding for the project since purchasing the property in 2018. Proclaim Liberty tells 4 News Now the project is now totally funded and an official groundbreaking will happen next week. It hopes to have the units ready to move into by next summer. Well, soon anyone convicted of creating sexually explicit images and videos of children using artificial intelligence will face harsher punishments in Washington. These types of images are known as deep fakes. Beginning in June, the penalties for these types of crimes will be the same as current child pornography laws. This law comes as deep fake technology becomes more accessible. According to a 2019 study, 96% of deep fake images were pornographic and 99% of them targeted women. Toyota is recalling 55,000 Prius models. It applies to the 2023 to 2024 Prius and Prius HEV vehicles. The world's largest automaker says water can enter the rear door latch and cause a short circuit. If the doors aren't locked, Toyota says the door could open while the vehicle is moving or in the event of a crash. Owners can take their car to the dealership and have the issue fixed for free. Well, downtown Spokane may soon have one less grocery store. Main Market Co-op announced it will be forced to shut down if sales don't improve by 20% over the next six months. Main Market says it's working with surrounding businesses on how to keep local businesses in downtown and adds it's open to feedback on how it can better serve customers and the community. Love them or hate them, Lime bikes and scooters are back, at least in Spokane Valley, Airway Heights, and Newport. Lime is not active in the city of Spokane right now. The city says it's reviewing offers from multiple e-scooter companies and expects contract approval by the end of May or early June. Last year, almost 600,000 Lime rides were taken in the Spokane region, marking a 42% growth since 2022. Well, the first national standard was set to limit so-called forever chemicals found in nearly half of U.S. drinking water. It's being called a huge breakthrough by environmentalists to help protect human health. Forever chemicals, or PFAS, are potentially dangerous synthetic chemicals. They can be found in products that are made to be waterproof, nonstick, and stain resistant, making them hard to get rid of as they linger in the environment and in the human body. The CDC says nearly 97% of all Americans have these chemicals in their blood. They're linked to many health problems, including cancer and kidney and liver damage, but you can reduce your exposure. You can avoid stain and water-resistant products and sprays. If you order delivery or takeout from restaurants, 
Remove your food from takeout containers before reheating. When cooking at home, steer clear of non-stick cookware and filter your drinking water with activated carbon or reverse osmosis if possible. Until last week, there was no federal standard on the chemicals in drinking water. The new national standard is legally enforceable. Water utilities will now have to filter out five types of individual forever chemicals. There are also a limit for mixtures of any two or more of these chemicals. Well, the number of women's basketball fans is on the rise, but the WNBA's rising stars are paid a fraction of what NBA players make. Coming up, we take a look at the base pay gap between the two leagues. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Washington Trust Bank Shred Day. Nothing is more important than the quality of your sleep. It sets up your whole day and gives you the energy you need for those important moments. And this week, Walker's Furniture is giving you a great opportunity to upgrade to a better mattress with special savings on all brands and up to five years special financing with no money down, as well as free delivery. Plus, up to $300 of free furniture with select mattress purchases, making it the perfect time to improve your sleep for less. This week at Walker's. Nice work. You take card? Can I get a check? Sure. Let me go find one. Thanks. Check behind the VCR. Can I be frank? You're cutting off potential clients by not offering card payments. That's like only watching one chain. That's fine. World War II channel. One type of music. Postmodern polka. One chain. Don't be a hater. Try our mobile card reader. Oh, good. You do take it. Welcome to the future. All right, let's power up. Nice. Two hands. Ten and two. STCU business. Chevy gets it. I want it. And I can afford it. Can be one and the same. With Chevy Trax, a car and driver 10 best. The rugged Chevy Trailblazer. And Chevy Colorado, Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Chevy, all you want is all within reach. Connected by OnStar. Get 1.9% financing on select popular Chevy SUVs when you finance with GM Financial. See your hometown Chevy dealer today. With local utility rebates and massive tax credits available, it's now possible to upgrade to a heat pump for less than a traditional air conditioner. Heat pumps are far more efficient than air conditioners when it comes to heating and cooling your home. Get year-round comfort with higher efficiency, all while lowering your monthly utility bills. So don't be fooled into buying outdated air conditioning technology. Upgrade to a heat pump. The smart choice for smart homeowners. Call Bill's Heating and AC today for your free estimate. Get moving with Dan the Moving Man. You might know us as Dan the Piano Man, but times they're a-changing. When it comes to piano moving, service, and storage, we're a local legend. And now we bring the same skills that built our reputation to every household move we make. Big moves, small moves, modern furniture, priceless heirlooms. For almost 50 years, our neighbors have trusted us with their treasures. We'll make your move easy and stress-free. Call today for a free estimate. Dan the Moving Man, 509-922-1085. All right, welcome back. Here's a live look at one of the Osprey and or goose cams in McEwen Park. If you <laughs> watch us regularly, you know what we're talking about. Our producer tells us there is an Osprey slowly building another nest on the north side of the park. But not, those geese are not going to be easy to yeah. kick out. We're no. not taking a look at that one, I think, because it's empty at the <laughs> moment. But And they arrive earlier than the Osprey. They return, so they get first dibs mm. on the nesting locations and once they are in they're like squatters <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you cannot they're get them get out, out of right uh, that takes us into wildlife wednesday and i thought since we were starting with the osprey cam and got a goose egg let's look at a beautiful osprey photo and uh, what's fun about this is not only is it a great photo uh, but we have a brand new photographer which is always exciting mark Stoser says he just picked up a camera recently mm. and this was his first season of taking photos of Osprey and he got this amazing image at Lake Fernand. If you squint, you could see that that Osprey does have a big old trout in its talons and it's getting ready uh, to take off and enjoy trout for dinner. Mark Vogt shared this 
Amazing photo. I am always in awe of uh, mountain goats. He spotted this Billy mountain goat and vice versa. This Billy mountain goat is staring Mark down. Uh, Mark says this mountain goat is still in its heavy winter coat looking uh, very regal, but it'll be shedding that soon as we start warming up. And from Larry Crumpleman, burrowing owls. Plural, if you look closely, you can see this burrowing owl's mate hiding behind the rocks. Burrowing owls are only about nine and a half inches tall, Larry tells me. They find their little homes in rocks and holes in the ground, and uh, they are absolutely adorable, but fierce. Now, I will tell you that Cattails is our Wildlife Wednesday sponsor, and they are having a big to-do on Saturday. I'm super excited. I will be emceeing it at the Garland Theater. There are still tickets available. It is a fundraiser to help sponsor the rescue work that they do at Cattails. And there's going to be some interesting announcements on some dreams and goals they have at Cattails. You can go to cattails.org to get tickets. There are still some available. And it's going to be a really fun night if you love cats and animals and wildlife. Here is a live look over downtown Spokane, the Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena and the courthouse. A moody sky, very spring-like sky. We had some afternoon convection around the region and that is starting to fizzle out as we see our sunset. We lose our daytime heating. Those skies are going to clear and our temperatures are going to drop. Here's our temperature trend for overnight lows over the next four days. This white line is our average overnight low, which is in the mid 30s. We're going to be down below freezing, heading up to 40 Saturday night. We have a system coming through, bringing us a chance of some showers and clouds. Our forecast radar over the next 24 hours, we are going to be dry with clearing skies for Thursday morning. We'll stay dry until we get into the afternoon. We'll just see a few isolated mountain showers. Oh, high temperatures tomorrow will be in the 50s and 60s, just about average in eastern Washington with a few more clouds in north Idaho will be a little bit cooler in the lower 50s in many locations. Friday, 57 and breezy. We're up into the 60s Saturday with sunshine, but then that system comes in Saturday night bringing us a slight chance of lingering showers on Sunday and breezy conditions. Earth Day Monday, gorgeous, 63, and mostly sunny. All right, Chris, thank you. Well, tomorrow, Sunrise Elementary School in Spokane Valley is hosting its final blood drive this year in honor of its students who have survived cancer and the one who's still fighting it. We were there at the last blood drive in December where donors were greeted with the photos of the four students who received blood during their cancer battles. The process to give blood takes about an hour and you can potentially save up to three lives. The blood drive is tomorrow from one to 5.30. You can sign up for a time slot through the link inside the story on KXLY.com. Pretty great. Mm -hmm. Well, one local company is making sure every mom is celebrated this Mother's Day. Spokane's YWCA is partnering up with the moving company Two Men in a Truck for their annual fundraiser. So for the next few weeks, the companies are collecting essential items for mothers in need. The companies are looking for things like toothpaste, body wash, maybe gently used clothes. On Mother's Day, those items will be gifted to women getting back on their feet with the help of YWCA. One of our core values is giving back to the community, and this was started by our founder, Mary Ellen. Um, so it's one that we hold dear to us, and we believe that every mother should feel special on Mother's Day. Well, you can drop off items at local businesses throughout the Inland Northwest until May 8th. For a full list of the participating stores and to learn how you can get involved, head to our website, kxly.com. Now, I can't say that I've ever wanted this, but <laughs> maybe you have wished you could have another prom night. This weekend, you actually can at the Second Chance Prom. It's an event for adults 21 and up. It's an excuse to get dressed up, dance the night away, and celebrate with friends and loved ones. Kevin James from Coyote Country's Jay and Kevin Show is the DJ and the mastermind behind the whole thing. Tune in to Good Morning Northwest tomorrow for a sneak peek at everything you can expect on the big night. Hopefully it wouldn't be too late to get a corsage and all that if yeah. you're trying to do it. Better do it right. Well, here's a look at ABC's primetime lineup tonight.
Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 38 specials, timeless Southern Rock Hits, live at Coeur d'Alene Casino, Thursday, April 18th. Get your tickets now for one of rock and roll's biggest all-time bands. It's just the beginning. Can I help you? Yeah, my car was dirty. I was just going to clean my window. Sure, but that'll be a dollar. To use the squeegee? Yep. Ridiculous, right? You know what else doesn't make sense? Some people are still paying for their checking accounts. Some places, it's 12 bucks a month. At P1FCU, we believe some things should just be free, like our Ascent checking, where you can earn 3.5% in dividends. Open your account at p1fcu.org slash free. Want free college or career training? It's possible. Make your home more energy efficient and beautiful with McVay Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Windows. Did you know McVay Brothers sells the popular Coeur d'Alene windows? And last year, the 6,000 Window and Door Series won the prestigious Energy Star Efficiency Award. Well, right now when you purchase a 6,000 Series window, we'll match your energy rebate up to $10 per square foot. Plus give you $500 off any roof you add to the job. At McVay Brothers, we're always working for you. Time to grab the broom and sweep out the old. It's spring cleaning time at Wendell Ford. Help us say goodbye to all the remaining 2023 Fords and hello to this year's best deals. The 23 F-150, 1.9% financing for 72 months. The 23 Mach-E, 0% financing for 72 months. The 23 Ford Escape, plug-in hybrid, 0% financing for 66 months. Hurry in today for these spring cleaning deals before they're swept away. Wendell Ford at the Y on North Division. Tonight, seating the jury for Donald Trump's criminal trial. Plus, how and when will Israel respond to Iran's retaliatory strike? More Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on television. Damn straight. Scotty McCreary is spreading his fresh take throwback country to Coeur d'Alene Casino Thursday, May 2nd. Get your tickets now for one of country music's biggest stars. Winning is just the beginning. Oh. For News Now is brought to you by Sate Bistro and Catering Company. Women's basketball is more popular than ever thanks to stars like Caitlin Clark, Cameron Brink, and Angel Reese. But some fans are just now learning about the massive pay gap between the base salaries between the WNBA and the NBA. ABC's Zareen Shaw explains. Clark! Oh my! As the major stars in women's basketball prepare for the bright lights of the WNBA, Angel Reese. The salaries that await them, which some are calling extremely low, exposing a wide but very real gender pay gap in professional basketball. She's going to make millions for the WNBA, and she's getting $76,000 next year. According to Spot Rack, Caitlin Clark, Cameron Brink, Camila Cordozo, Rikia Jackson are all tied for the highest female rookie salaries, estimated to make $76,535 this year. This is slightly less than the average mean wage in America last year. Are they doing DoorDash on the side to survive? I mean, I know you ain't buying a house on that salary. Incoming WNBA players like Clark and Angel Reese already cashing in in other ways, piggybacking off their NIL deals with endorsements and partnerships that far exceed the WNBA salaries. But most current WNBA players need to supplement their income by playing overseas. It's a sharp contrast to last year's top three picks in the NBA rookie class, who averaged around $10 million a year. But the WNBA has never generated the same kind of revenue Revenue as the 60 year old NBA. It's because of fans' lack of interest, not watching, not buying products, not buying tickets. That's why we are where we are right now. But that can change. And I think it will change because of what we're watching. The much anticipated WNBA season, driven by the record ratings for women's college basketball and a draft night which saw more viewers than the NBA draft has seen in more than two decades, it could shake up the professional sports landscape. 
We are witnessing a transformational moment in sports that we may not experience for generations. Support for the WNBA is continuing to grow. On Tuesday, Clark, whose Indiana Fever jersey has already set a record as the highest selling jersey in any sport in the history of fanatics, spoke to GMA about going pro. I worked really hard for it. Um, and I think that's what I'm really proud of is like I earned it, I deserved it. Clark steps back, fires, you bet! And all of this is a really good sign to move the conversation forward as the WNBA starts to negotiate a new rights deal, a new TV rights deal, which they will be doing very soon. And it's TV rights and corporate partnerships that dictate how leagues pay their players once new TV contracts are negotiated and bigger female college stars go into the WNBA. We should gradually see less of that pay difference. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. And while there are more eyes on women's basketball, the number of girls actually participating in the sport is low. It's like pulling teeth to try to get the kids to play. Find out what's driving girls away from basketball and what could get some players who've walked away from the game back on the court tomorrow in Marissa Rio's special report here on 4 News Now at 6. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Washington Trust Bank is a proud sponsor of Bloomsday 2024. Western. a year spring tune-up event this week at the Cal Superstores at Airway Heights and Coeur d'Alene. Hi, I'm George, and I'm offering great deals on over 300 of the best rigs in the region. And this weekend, when you purchase a vehicle from Cal, you can get up to $600 in free upgrades, like light bars, custom grills, or tires and rims to customize your ride, making it the perfect time to visit Cal. Like the deals and love your wheels. I'm a little over my head here. We can certainly take care of that for you. When you're looking for a company that's noteworthy, look no further. Call your friends at Mainstream Electric Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing and spend your time doing more important things. The Honda you want is here. So drive in the moment with the versatile CRV or Accord. Both named a Car and Driver 10 Best. And when you drive a Honda, you're driving with the 2023 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com Best Value Brand. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. Washington Trust Bank is a proud sponsor of Bloomsday 2024. 4 News Now is brought to you by CARD, the Center for Asbestos-Related Diseases. Coming up tonight on Nightside, hundreds of Providence healthcare workers are preparing to go on strike. Why negotiations failed tonight at 11. Here's a look at your planning forecast. 56 degrees with mostly sunny skies tomorrow, but it is going to be a cold night. Overnight lows uh, down in the lower 30s and even the 20s in some locations. That's right. I actually turned my sprinklers on over the weekend. I think I'm going to turn them back off because uh -oh. it's just <laughs> these cold mornings. It's a little not like, great. Yeah, a little cold. <laughs> the grass is green though, you're right. <laughs> it's getting it's there. Tough. <laughs>